Hello and Namaste. In my presentation, I am focusing on the idea of karma in Jainism. As we know, karma is a very important topic, very important notion across all philosophical traditions of India. But in most other traditions, karma is taken as a metaphysical idea. But here in Jainism, karma takes a physical form. So it's like a, it's almost like dust particles, physical particles that get attached to soul. Soul is a metaphysical idea and dust particle is a physical idea, but something that is physical is attaching to something that is metaphysical. That's where Jain idea of karma takes a really different form, different view altogether. So let me share my screen and uh, then I'll discuss it further. And here it is. Share screen. Okay, so this is my presentation. And so, yes, so as I said, karma is like the dust particles on the soul. All right, so what are the, so first slide, in the first slide, I'm discussing what are the causes of karma from Jain perspective? Why exactly these karma particles get attached to the soul? So first uh, notion that is unique to, again, to Jainism is that there are some, some, Thing called kashayas, kashayas. Kashayas are the glue of passions, anger, pride, deception, greed. That is krodh, mud, moh, and lobe. These are the glue that are present on our soul and they attract these karma particles and which get polluted, uh, which pollutes the soul. The karma particles further pollute the soul. False belief is another reason karma particles get attracted to, to the soul, lack of discipline in one's practice, carelessness, doing mental, physical, or verbal violence, uh, mental, physical, verbal activities in general itself causes karma particles to pollute the soul. Now, whereas yoga is a very positive, uh, grand idea in Hinduism, Buddhism, here yoga word takes another kind of, uh, almost like a negative turn in Jainism. Yoga is any mental, physical, verbal activities that is attracting karma particles to soul. So yoga is to be shunned away. Yoga is to be reduced in Jain perspective. <clears throat> so do we have any example in Jain history where somebody cleansed off his soul completely? Zero particle, zero karma particles were left on Mahavir's soul when he, atta when he attains nirvana. So while he was doing his penance, his austere practices, meditations, and so on, uh, let me read the quote now. So while all these practices he was doing, he was struck with a stick, the fist, a lance, hit with a fruit, a clod, a pot shirt, beating him again and again. Many cried when he once sat without moving his body. Many cut his flesh, tore his hair under pain, or covered him with dust. dust. Throwing him up, they let him fall or disturbed him in his religious postures, abandoning the care of his body. The venerable one humbled himself and bore pain, free from desires. As a hero at the head of the battle is surrounded by all sides, so was there Mahavira. Bearing all hardships, the venerable one, undisturbed, proceeded on the road to Nirvana. There's a Jain text, Shvetambar text called as Acharang Sutra, chapter 8, verse 356, page 60, that describes how exactly Mahavira cleansed off his soul even as many were torturing him, beating him, giving all kinds of pain to him, yet Mahavir remains completely equanimous and he practices his meditation with utmost focus, utmost concentration. And that equanimity succeeded, Mahavira, using that equanimity, he succeeded in removing all dust particles, all, all karma particles from his soul. That's how he attains nirvana. Now, in Jainism, as we know, there are two sects, Digambar and Shvetambar. Digambar, in Digambar tradition, monks are completely naked. They don't wear any clothes. In Shvetambar, monks and nuns wear white clothes. Now, this quotation about Mahavira's life is from a Shvetambar text, Acharan Sutra, because Digambar sect believes that they lost all, all the scriptures. They don't accept any scriptures. But Shvetambars have their own scriptures in which biographies of Mahavira and other great Tirthankaras are preserved very meticulously, very carefully. So there's a quote from Mahavira's life, how exactly he attained Nirvana. He attained Nirvana only when he could remove all the karma particles from his soul. 
And that happened with these extreme ultimate penance practices, ultimate austere practices that he indulged in, even while people were torturing him or giving him all kinds of violence, but his med meditation could not be disturbed. His focus on his soul could not be disturbed. All right. So, so Jainism believes, Jainism teaches or, or mentions that there are four kinds of different realms that a soul can be in. A soul can be in celestial kingdom, that is Swarga. Soul can be in human kingdom, that is Prithvi. Soul can be in infernal kingdom, that is Nark. Or, or soul can be on the earth, but not as a human being. Soul can be in animal or plant kingdom. So there are, these are the four possible conditions of a soul. So first, once again, going uh, anti-clockwise, first could be Nark. Second could be Tiryanch, that is animal or or plants. Third could be uh, Prithvi as human being, Manushya Gati or Swarga, Dev Gati. These are the four ways a soul can exist within the Jain universe. Jain universe is in the shape of a, uh, of a unique shape as if a human being is standing with his head on his, on his uh, center part of his body. So top of the line, top of this universe is the, is the Swarga Middle region is the earth and below earth is the Nark, is heaven or is hell. So heaven, that is Swarg, Prithvi and Nark. Now human, uh, a soul can be in any of these conditions, either uh, in Swarg or Nark or Prithvi. And on Prithvi, it can be of two types. Prithvi, either it can be a human being, Manushya Gati or Tiryanch Gati, that is animal or plant kingdom. Now, <clears throat> depending on one's karma, one can be in either of these Gatis, that is Swarg, Nark, Prithvi, uh, Man, that is Manushya or Triyanj. As one progresses in his spiritual life, the karma particles, even the positive karma particles, must be completely gone. That's how one can skip all these four conditions and can go directly to Moksh, uh, Moksh that is beyond all these four, four uh, conditions. But as long as one, some, somebody has even positive karma, one can be hopeful of only reach up to the Swarga, that is celestial kingdom, Dev, Devgati. But Devgati is not moksha. Right? Devgati has positive karma, but it's, so it's kind of a temporary reward. And once those reward, reward, once that reward is over, you need to come back to earth and again strive for moksha. Moksha is the ultimate, ultimate destination, ultimate uh, goal of every soul. So that is the, you know, in a nutshell, the soul and uh, what are the different destinations of soul uh, present in Jainism, uh, possible in Jainism. I just summarize in this slide. And now, so, so soul can, soul does have a lot of karma particles until it gets moksha. What are the different kinds of moksha part, uh, karma particles on soul? Karma particles could be harming, that is ghatiya karma. Ghatiya karma has four types. Mohaniya karma. That is, one, when one, one soul is attached to incorrect views, that incorrect views could be faith deluding. That is, darshan mohaniya karma, when philosophy, one gets attached to wrong philosophy. Or charitra, charitra mohaniya karma, that is, conduct deluding. When one's conduct is deluded, when, when one's conduct is wrong, one's faith is wrong, that is the mohaniya karma, delusory karma. That's kind of a delusion on one's faith or one's conduct. So it's very extremely harmful karma for soul. For the spiritual development. Then there is Jnana Varniya Karma. When one's knowledge is blocked, when the one does not have the right knowledge, that's also very harmful karma. Then darshan avarniya karma. That is, one's perception itself is obscured, one's senses are blocked, and one cannot achieve the real perception because one's senses are blocked. That's also very harmful. Then there is antraya or obstacle in soul's energy's progress. See, if that progress is blocked, that's a kind of an obstacle also. So, in summary, four different kinds of harmful karmas. There are delusory karma, that is, mohani karma, jnanavani karma, when knowledge is covered. Darshan is covered, or there is an actual obstacle in one's progression. 
Then there, there are four types of non-harmful karma also. These are just, you know, one is naturally born with these four karma karmas and one can just wait until these four karma particles are automatically gone. One cannot really achieve, can one cannot do anything to remove these four types of karma. What are those? First is the feelings. That is Vedani karma. That is pleasant or unpleasant experiences that keep rising in our soul and we just have to observe them but we cannot control them. We cannot generate them. They're just happening naturally. Second is the Nam karma. One, what, what stage of rebirth or senses or spiritual potential one has Depending on that, one gets that kind of a name, that kind of a name, uh, that kind of a family name. Then the life itself, lifespan of, of, a, of a body, duration of one's life is also beyond our control. And that depends on our past karmas, what kind of lifespan that we get. We have to live by that those, those, those many years. We cannot reduce our lifespan. So that's another karma particle that is just in, one is inborn with those karma particles. One has to just wait for his for his death, his or her death, until that that karma particle of body itself is gone. Then the clan or gotra karma, social circumstances for spiritual progress. That is also beyond our control. We are just born. Some people are just naturally born in family in a family that is spiritually advanced. Others are born in a family that is spiritually not so advanced. So that will also affect one's spiritual progress in this life. So these are the four non-harming karma, that is aghati karma, they are not so harmful because these are beyond our control, the name that we get, the lifespan that we get, the gotra that we get, the clan that we get, and feelings that we have with any karma in our soul. Uh, some more karma karmic ideas. Uh, Jain principle, Jain philosophy says that a soul can have a different lesha or color depending on one's mental activity. So, so this color is imparted to the soul from the mental activity lying behind on action, lying behind an action. So what kind of action we have, mental activity we have that generates a different kind of a color? Again, depending on karmic influence on one's soul, one will get a different kind of colorful lesha. That's another related idea to karma on in Jainism. Second point here, karma is, although karma is a very, very important, very most powerful idea in Jain, Jain philosophy in one's spiritual progress, but that doesn't mean that Jains don't accept fate or evil eye or destiny or astrology. All of these are also important. All of these are also accepted and believed by many Jains. Now, third point is also important. It, it uh, is also present in other religions of the world, including Hinduism and Christianity, that what kind of mental state one has before death, that will determine the next birth. So it's very important to have a peaceful death. Uh, you know, some, some say that there's, in addition to art of living, one should also learn art of dying. How we die, how we accept death is extremely important, especially in Jainism. So many uh, do spiritual fasting, and they willingly accept death by renouncing their food, water, all kinds of consumption with complete willpower to accept death with positive perspective. So that positive perspective determines one's next birth. Very important. So that the next birth will remain, uh, will keep them on track towards spiritual progress. So death is positive. Death will lead to positive rebirth. So that's also very important in one's karmic progress, one's spiritual progress. Now, in Jainism, there is the idea of transmigration or punarjan is a rapid punarjan. There is no intermediary state. So in Hinduism and I think in other religions also, there, is, there could be an intermediate stage where one dies, but one does not get the next rebirth immediately. But Jainism has this idea of immediate rebirth. There is no, there is no hanging between two lifespans. So one dies and the soul immediately takes the next birth depending on one's men mental state before death or depending on one's karmic uh, cycle, one's karmic residual, what kind of karmas somebody, somebody has in, in store, that will determine his or her next birth. Uh, then funeral rituals that happen at the time after death in Jainism are very similar to Hindu rituals. Many Jain uh, rites of passage such as wedding or, uh, or cremation uh, rituals are very similar to how Hindus perform. So Jains, because of the larger Hindu culture, that Jains are most Jains are in, you know, in India, in Hindu culture. So they have accepted many of the Hindu ceremonies such as for conception or birth, naming, wedding, 
and death and so on. So cre uh, cremation is one of those one of those rites of passage. So Jain rituals are very similar to Hindu rituals, and they are again done for positive rebirth. So positive proper rituals are important for positive rebirth. Then the soul itself can be of two types in Jainism. One type of soul is bhavya soul that is capable of moksha. Liberation is possible. Second is a bhavya soul that is incapable of attaining moksha completely because of complete lack of concentration in, in sermons, discourses by Jain monks and nuns, ascetics, non-belief in Jain practices or insin insincerity of Arjanas. These are some of the traits, some of the, some of the characteristics of abhavya souls, souls that are completely incapable of attaining any moksha at all because of their these negative qualities. So those are the ways to divide, to categorize the souls in the universe from Jain perspective. Bhavya and abhavya. Bhavya can attain liberation. Abhavya cannot attain liberation at all. Jains believed almost you know, more than 3,000 years ago that plants possess consciousness, they're aware of their surroundings, plants have desire for nourishment, even sexual reproduction, plants have sense of fear and possession, plants express morally negative feelings such as anger, and plants have potential for spiritual liberation. All of these ideas are mentioned in Jain text two, three thousand years ago. Very interesting. And so plants can also overcome their karma. Plants can also uh, be hopeful of positive karma and, and eventually be reborn as human beings and from there they can attain moksha. So only human beings are eligible to attain moksha. So plants must wait to get rebirth in human uh, body and from there they can attain moksha. That's the only way possible in Jainism. No other uh, being is eligible for moksha except human beings. All right. Now animals, uh, in the category of animals, Jains, Jainism has included fish and birds also. Uh, these are uh, five sense beings with some mental aptitude and they can also get rebirth in heaven by practicing austerities and from heaven, but they must come back to earth, take human body. Human beings are only eligible for moksha. So even animals must get human bodies in the, in the next life cycle. That's how they can attain moksha. Now in Digambar tradition, I mentioned uh, some slides ago that Digambars have rejected all Shvetamar scriptures. But then came Acharya Kundkun about 2000 years back, about 500 years after Mahavir had passed away, after Mahavir attained his moksha, about five, 600 years later came Kundkunda and he created new texts and those are accepted as Digambar scriptures. So he was a uh, founder of the, he was born in a South Indian village in early first millennium and he was founder of the Digambar Mool Sangha, that is the original sect of Digambara, Digambaras was founded by Acharya Kundkund. And so these are the texts that are attributed to him, 16 texts, and they're, they all emphasize interiorization of religious life, you know, away from rituals, away from uh, veneration of ascetics or so on. What is required is to interiorize, to have this, this spiritual experience inside of one's own soul. That is what was highlighted by Kundkunda. So first is Niyamsar, which, uh, which uh, summarizes rituals by ascetics. Second is Panchastikai, which are five fundamental realities it talks about. Then Pravachansar has, is a manual of spiritual behavior. Then Samasar describes the real nature of the self. So these are some of the important Digambar scriptures that they all are focusing on how to reduce or how to cleanse off one's soul, uh, of remove all the karma particles and attain moksha. So that's the major focus of all of these texts written by Acharya Kunkun about almost two, two millennia ago. So, he talk, so Acharya Kundkun talked about soul as the only true and ultimate category. All of the other categories, all the other entities in the universe are all temporary and uh, <clears throat> false categories, but the soul is the final truth. Uh, when, when one attains omniscience, that is nirvana, like Mahavir attained, he focuses only on soul as the soul object. Right? Everything else is, is uh, not important, but soul becomes the, the final reality for somebody attaining nirvana. Soul can have multiple standpoints. So, the, so there are different nayas. Naya is the standpoint. There is nishcha and naya, that is certain. Parmarth naya, that is supreme. Or shuddha naya, that is pure. Or there is vyavhar naya, that is worldly perspective, worldly standpoint. So certain things are true from worldly standpoint. 
certain things are to be so worldly standpoint is to be sacrificed to practice and to achieve the final that is supreme standpoint that is the ultimate spiritual standpoint that highlights only soul worldly so worldly perspective can highlight even body and other temporary realities in the world and acharya kun kun talked about denial of physical reality denial of even asceticism and denial of rituals what he what he highlighted was only meditation only focus on soul doesn't matter whether you're an ascetic or householder so all of those are worldly perspectives to divide the people among ascetics or householders all that is all that is worldly perspective but the even within even while living as a householder in a, in worldly life one can practice spirituality one can practice meditation one can focus on his soul and one can still attain nirvana that was the idea by acharya kunkun and of course there are many critiques by later commentator on based on what uh, acharya kunkun mentioned in his own text 2000 years back and in his work he talks about four aspects of ashrava bandha sthiti and anubhag what are those ashrava is the influx of new karma particles on soul which creates new bondages that is bandha bandha they stay on soul for a certain duration there is sthiti and finally when karma uh, are are ripe enough to be removed from soul so that is called as fusion of the of these karma particles and once they are ripe these karma particles naturally uh, get removed from soul of course by a lot of austere practices these karma particles are gone and one then one is closer to to one's moksha so this is a brief summary i i shared with you this karma particles the the soul how soul is described in digambar texts who who was the primary writer of digambar texts acharya kundkun and uh, animals also have soul and animals also have re- uh, can also attain rebirth and attain human birth and and can get, can get moksha plants similarly can attain uh, human rebirth and can attain moksha and there are two types of soul bhavya and abhavya i mentioned and uh, the other kar- karmic part uh, karmic ideas are also accepted such as destiny and astrology and color to the soul and rapid trans migration of the soul in jainism i talked about different kinds of aghati non harmful karma particles are uh, i also mentioned and harmful karma particles i mentioned so, and the four kinds of soul stages that that in jainism are possible that also i summarized and the biggest role model of jains is mahavir who by his strict penance he could remove all those all his karma particles and can attain could attain moksha and the kashay is the major reason for karma particles that is the krodh mad moh and lo so with that i complete my my presentation and i hope it was uh, of some use to learn about jainism thank you